than a Wednesday noon-ish. I'm here with my friend Martha Burke, author of Your Voice, Your Vote. We're here in Edit Studio C here at New Mexico PBS. We're going to be talking about the Equal Rights Amendment, what's been going on recently in the news, but then also more importantly, what the ERA means, what it could mean, its purpose, and obviously its history. And Martha, thank you for spending a little time on this. I really appreciate oh, I'm it. very glad to be here. Absolutely. Now, we, what we do know is Virginia just became the last state needed to nationally ratify this. It, we'll an asterisk there, I'll explain in a second, <laughs> to make this actually happen. This is a fight that's been happening basically since 1923, but in modern times, 1972 was when it got going for real, and we had a bunch of states ratify, and since that time, We've had a bit of a delay here through a lot of political reasons and societal reasons and cultural reasons we're going to talk about here in a quick second. But Martha, my very first question, of course, is for folks who might be a little bit younger than you and I might be, what is the purpose of the ERA? Why is it important and why do we need to have it ratified now, especially? Well, the purpose of it is to grant women equal citizenship with men. Most people think we have it. That's right. We actually do not have it in terms of how the court interprets our rights mm -hmm. because women's, uh, women were left out of the 14th Amendment. The right. 14th Amendment granted citizenship to African-American men, but no women right after the Civil War. That's right. And it specifically stated all, cit all uh, people born in the United States, but then there was an asterisk, except we're not going to let women vote. Right. And so women, ever since then, what courts call the level of scrutiny, mm -hmm. if a court case comes, if it's a race case, it's the highest level of scrutiny. They have to really... Uh, establish that there is a compelling reason mm. for some kind of discrimination. Right. Uh, but in the case of women, it's a, called a lower level of scrutiny, intermediate scrutiny. It's amazing. So they can get away with a lot more. Right. But uh, that that's the origin of it. It goes back all the way to post-Civil War. Exactly right. In 1923, I mentioned, of course, a uh, famous suffragist was the first to, uh, one of many, I shouldn't say she was alone on this, but to really start to get this moving in the Congress, it was considered every Congress up until 1972. What happened in that, in that interim? What was going on there that made it not able to, to get passed? Well, it's so kind of the same thing that's going on now, Jean. Mm -hmm. uh, they would say, oh, women are already equal. You really don't need it. Uh, now, in 23, it wasn't quite that way because they didn't make that argument so much, but, you know, the men know more. Sure. They're, they know what's best for women. Yeah. And one of the biggest arguments, uh, it took women from uh, the time of the 14th Amendment until 1920 to get the vote. Right. And after they got the vote, then in 23, they decided we need to go a step further mm -hmm. and do the Equal Rights Amendment. I think it would be terrific if in this 100th anniversary year of suffrage right. that we would get the Equal Rights Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of ramifications to it, which I think we can get into as why we need it. Sure. Let's talk about the amendment itself, the wording. The wording. Yes. I, the Equal Rights Amendment, people think it's this long. Right. They think it's a big, long, complicated legal document that nobody can understand. We don't need it anyway. Just forget it. Right. No, I'm going to read it to you. Please. Uh, now be prepared for 15 minutes here. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right? That's Seems it. simple, right? I yeah. mean, now there are two more sentences. Yeah. One says the Congress can enforce it right. through statutory action. And the last sentence is this amendment shall take effect two years. And so now there are going to be two legal arguments against it and some just stuff like we don't need it anymore, sure. women are equal. Uh, but one will be that um, there was a time limit and it was not ratified within the time limit. Mm -hmm. The original time limit was 
72 and it was extended once to 75 mm -hmm. and it fell short by three states by 19. You have to have 38 states right. to ratify and it fell short so people are saying well we, we have to start all over but there's precedent for not having to start all over because mm -hmm. first of all no time limits on any other amendment. That's right. There was one amendment to the Constitution called the Madison Amendment that took 202 years wow. to be ratified. Huh. And so that is a very strong precedent for not counting that time limit. There is a movement in the Congress uh, led by, not surprisingly, a couple of uh, specific female uh, congressional people to actually move around that because my understanding is the Congress could actually move around that that time limit that's been imposed. Do I have that right? If they if they chose to, I th think that is right. Okay. That, that's the case they're making. It's never right. been tested. Well, that's a good point. Because we've never had it before. Right. But the stronger argument, I think, is that Madison Amendment. It's been settled. Mm -hmm. If it can wait two hundred years, can this amendment not wait 40 or 50, right? Uh, which it will. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's going to be challenged. It depends on what the opponents are thinking. I see. Somebody has got to bring a lawsuit to try to stop it. I know they will, mm -hmm. but it just depends on which legal argument they, they choose. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Martha Burke, author of Your Voice, Your Vote. We're talking about the Equal Rights Amendment. We'd love your thoughts about this. You can get us, get to us. Via, via our Facebook page, how you're watching right now, in the comment thread below. We'll be able to get those questions to Martha and talk about all of this in, in some fine detail. Uh, Martha, let's back up in, about why this is important. It, it seems to me it cuts across a lot of different areas, health care, uh, work situations, all kinds of things. If you can touch on some of that, that might be. I absolutely can, yeah. Gene. And there's a fundamental reason why it's important, mm -hmm. irregardless of specific issues right and that is because all the rights women have in the United States right now are statutory ah. that means let's say we have an Equal Pay Act mm -hmm. it's illegal to pay women and men differently for the same job mm -hmm. that can be swept away in the blink of an eye mm -hmm. Congress decides to repeal it it's gone right if we have an Equal Rights Amendment it isn't gone right. it's fundamental equal rights with men in the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. I can name some other things. Title IX, ah. equal educational opportunity. Most people think of that as sports, but it's not all sports. Uh, we could go back to uh, segregated, sex segregated classes where the boys got a better education, better teachers, better right. classrooms, and so forth. We had that for a long time. Yep. And it is creeping back anyway. I'm glad you mentioned that because I think a lot of the times when I hear pushback about the ERA, I think people think it's just <coughs> settled. The issue is settled about equality. And we, I think we now know from what we've been watching nationally and federally that at any given moment, any given election cycle, a lot of things could can, change. A lot of things can be swept away. Let's mm -hmm. take uh, pregnant pregnancy discrimination. Okay. You cannot be fired for being pregnant right. because we have a statute. But that statute can be repealed by Congress at any time mm -hmm. if they get a majority. That's right. And they would do it under the idea of we're protecting women because we're too fragile to work while we're pregnant, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That was thinking for a long time. So we have to enshrine equal rights for women in the Constitution to head that off because the way politics are going now, right. we're definitely on a conservative bent mm -hmm. in many areas, not sure. just women. Uh, and so we have to guard against that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go back to time when uh, the employer Title VII, the Civil Rights Act, says it's illegal to say to a woman, we don't hire women. Wow. We, we don't hire women in this job. Wow. That could go away. I mean, think about that. That that You know what I mean? We all think it's just, even my, I have two daughters, they're younger. They've grown up in a world where they... They do think about it because I make them think about it, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, for a lot of younger women, they don't think about these things, that things could go backwards very quickly. Jean, when, when I was younger, married to my first husband, I had a job uh, and I wanted to buy a car. Right. So I went to the bank to get a loan for the car. And they said, um, 
you have to have a man sign for the loan. Wow. And I said, well, they didn't know if I was married or not. I said, well, who would that be? And they said, your husband. Mm. And I said, well, uh, what if I don't have a husband? Is it okay if the yard guy signs? <laughs> but this is the kind of yep. stuff they did. That's right. And they could legally do it, and they did do it. That's right. That's right. Let's talk about abortion. What are the, what's the upshot for abortion with the ERA? Well, it's, it's every, all over the map, Jim. Okay. And here's why. Yeah. Abortion is enshrined, the right to abortion in Roe okay. is, is pinned on the right to privacy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't ha it's not connected to the ERA in any way. Mm -hmm. Now, the ERA has been used in some states, New Mexico included, mm -hmm. Uh, to litigate uh, cases where abortion was part of the dialogue. I see. Uh, and it was ruled in 1999 in New Mexico. New Mexico, by the way, has a state ERA. Ah. So it was the state ERA that this was litigated under, right. but it's relevant to a national. Mm -hmm. And so the people who opposed abortion brought a lawsuit and said, you know, we're going to outlaw abortion. Mm -hmm. And the advocates <laughs> said, no, you can't because we have a state ERA and mm -hmm. women have to have, it, they didn't say the right to abortion, equal access to medical procedures that are necessary on the same basis as men. Mm -hmm. We do not have any surgical or other procedures that we say you can't have this because you're a man. That's right. So that's, that's right. how the ERA has been used about abortion. Now, one of the big bugaboos is the anti-abortion folks are saying, oh, it's going to enshrine abortion on demand. It's going to do this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. It's going to ruin civilization. Mm -hmm. But they say that about anything when it comes to the right to control your own body and your reproductive health and mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. So they claim it's all about getting abortion. But there have been some other cases where they, the courts have said, well, it's kind of moot, you know, it's mm -hmm. really not about that. Mm -hmm. They do try to say, well, men don't get abortion, so the ERA doesn't apply. Mm -hmm. No one knows uh, what would happen mm -hmm. uh, in terms of that issue, mm -hmm. but we must keep in mind that it's really about equal protection under the law and the right to privacy. Gotcha. And it, it, it's not an abortion specific. That didn't even come up in 23 or really right. that much in the 70s. Sure, sure. Any upshot for LGBTQ rights? Anything that gets affected by the ERA passage? You know, this is a new area uh -huh. because in the 23 and even in, in 70s, uh, we didn't think so much about L LGBTQ mm -hmm. rights, mm -hmm. we it just went on the radar. That's right. It, because it it says on account of sex, uh, again, it's a moving target. My view, if I were a law lawyer, which I'm not, mm -hmm. don't even play one on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say yes, it's that would be covered. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, transsexual folks, mm -hmm. uh, bisexual, mm -hmm. uh, gay, lesbian. Uh, to me, that's all on account of sex, mm -hmm. so that would be covered. It's yet to be litigated, though. What would be litigated, it seems to me, is, is from your list just there is trans women. Mm -hmm. It seems to me the conservatives would go after that part real hard. It was an opening for them, you know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. that, any thoughts there about how trans women would come through with ERA? Is there something that would be protective for them as well, well at this see, point? The, the ERA doesn't mention gender. Right. It just says sex. Okay. So trans men would come under that rubric as well. That's the point. Okay. Uh, it, it doesn't say women shall have equal rights. It says equality of rights shall not be abridged on account of sex. Right. Right. And so as civilization moves on and enlightenment hopefully right. happens, uh, I don't see why it could not be used to encompass rights for those folks. Sure, sure. Let's, uh, let's peel back to the states and of course we hitched this on what Virginia just did uh, just this week, uh, just a couple days ago as a matter of fact, interestingly. Now what's also interesting is uh, Idaho, Kentucky, Nebraska, Tennessee, South Dakota rescinded their ratification a few years ago, which is an amazing thing to me when you think about it, that anybody would just even think to rescind it. It's just laying there doing nothing. Why even mess with it 
What was the thought behind it? Do we know why these states well, wanted to go backwards? Most of that was anti-abortion stuff. Okay. People have convinced themselves it's abortion on demand. I see. But it was a, a general mindset of conservatism. But that is the second challenge that will become highly relevant mm -hmm. in the courts. There is no constitutional provision for rescinding a ratification. It does not exist. Huh. And this is something the courts have never had to grapple with. Because right. as far as we know, no other amendment to the Constitution, has, they, have they ever even tried to rescind it. Right. But, of course, advocates are going to argue, I think with some substantial success, I hope, that there's no constitutional provision for that at all. Right. It just, uh, there's an, it's kind of like, if I can name a name, uh, Donald Trump saying that he is uh, immune from any prosecution, uh, you know, absolute immunity. Sure. That doesn't exist. That's right. Rescinding a, an amendment does not exist. Yeah. Interesting. I should note as well, Nevada and Illinois have ratified since 2017. So yes. it's not as if this thing has been sitting there no. doing nothing. There is it underneath the surface. There's been a lot of activity here. And I'm trying to anticipate maybe some pushback from the conservative side of the world that would this be a state's rights issue to these people? I'm, I'm not quite clear what, well, what their defense of, of a rescinding might uh, be. I think that they would think it would go back to the states. Yeah. But that would be like, um, let's go ahead and rescind our ratification of the 14th Amendment. So uh, mm -hmm. black people cannot have mm -hmm. the vote. Right. Black men specifically at sure. that time. Black women didn't get it till 1920 along mm -hmm. with the white women. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the same principle. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I, I do not see how they can make that argument. They would love to right. uh, because they would like to limit women's rights in many ways. Right. Uh, and your rights as well as an African-American right. man. It's all connected. Exactly it right. Is. I'm curious about the color of your fingernails. I got a funny feeling there's something going on there. You don't usually wear as I know you. There is something going on. Think of these fingernails as a banner. Okay. Okay, go back to your old pictures of women marching for the vote. Right. In the 20s. They all had white clothing on and many of them wore hats. But they had banners mm -hmm. that were purple and gold. And so I'm wearing this in uh, commemoration of the 100th anniversary of suffrage. Nice. And uh, I have a new book, as you said, at mm -hmm. the first, Your mm -hmm. Voice, Your Vote, mm -hmm. The Savvy Woman's Guide to Political Power mm -hmm. and the Change We Need. Mm -hmm. And uh, so just to call attention to all the unfinished business uh, that women must face and, and things like child care, right. family and medical leave. Right. You know, let's get away from abortion for a minute, talk mm -hmm. about our kids. Mm -hmm. We don't have any paid family leave in this country. We don't have any child care, a decent system. Uh, many families pay more for child care in a year than a college tuition That's cost. Right. That's right. And so uh, I want to advocate for the things we still need mm -hmm. and what we can do. And, and, you know, it's the anniversary of women getting the vote. Yep. And I will have to say, I want other women to have their nails done, too. Uh, <laughs> Interestingly, in Virginia, in that vote, Linda Bird Johnson Robb, she's the daughter, of, you might imagine the name, of, of LBJ. She wore a purple pantsuit. And, oh, yeah? Yeah, and she had the whole thing going on. It's actually a really cool picture. It's really well, kind of purple fun. has always been the suffrage colors, and, mm -hmm. and that's the reason because the women marched with it. But I do think that many of our young people don't realize, Gene, mm -hmm. what is possible right. with the political will. That's right. Because we've never had child care. Other countries, enlightened countries, have paid family leave. Right. They have subsidized child care. Right. They have even free college. And, but they mm -hmm. don't have a lot of wars. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to finance our military That's adventures. Right. That's right. Trillions for bombs versus versus uh, health care, everything else. But exactly where, right. where I was going with this Please. is women, now that we have the vote, mm -hmm. we actually now, since 1980, 
have had the ability to control any election. Let's talk about that a little bit. That was a big part of the, when I read your book, the first version, I'm anxious to get into the second version because I know there's a lot of updates. Mm -hmm. But as it was really kind of shocking to me how much latent political power women have. It's just sort of laying there like a bomb. Yeah, it, it, it is. really is. It I mean, really it, is. Yeah. It would be a tsunami. And, you know, right back to the ERA, in 1980, the ERA was very much a, in contention in the presidential election. Mm -hmm. Reagan was against it. Mm -hmm. They took it out of the Republican Party platform for the first time in history, and it has remained out every right. si ever since. Right. Carter was, of course, for the ERA. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in history, women voted substantially different than men. Mm -hmm. And it was dubbed the gender gap. That's we right. still have it. In every election since 1980, women have voted differently than men. Wow. And the argument against the vote was always, well, women don't need the vote. They've already got equal rights, which they, of course, did not. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to do the same thing uh, their husband tells them to do anyway. So why do they need the vote? Oh, and there was a third one. Women are going to take over the country. Oh, for gosh sake. If they get the vote. Right. Well, you know what? <laughs> women have the ability. Now, we're the majority of the population. That's right. The majority of registered voters right. and the majority that actually show up at the polls. That's right. So and the gap is it seems to be widening a little bit about you know who's it, participating. Yeah, it goes yeah. up and down. It was mm -hmm. pretty narrow during uh, the Clinton uh, first election because mm -hmm. we had the third party candidates and they siphoned off mm -hmm. some votes. It was quite large in this last election mm -hmm. overall, mm -hmm. but there was one group of women who did go for Trump in substantial numbers, and that was white women without a college degree. I see. But the overall gap was over 20 percent. Sure. That women voted uh, for their own agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say mm -hmm. in the book. Vote your own agenda. You need right. child care, vote for that candidate that cares about mm -hmm. child care. Mm -hmm. You want abortion to be legal, you better look. Because right now, Gene, there are over 20 bills working their way through state legislatures that the right wing is hoping one of them will get to the Supreme Court to mm. overturn Roe v. Wade. Interesting. Yeah, and that, a lot of young yeah. people don't realize that. Glad either. you just mentioned young people. That was my next thought. It just seems to me there's an interesting opportunity here. We have millions of young women coming literally into voting age mm -hmm. this cycle, like mm -hmm. right now. It's, it's an amazing wave of young people, certainly both men and women, but for young women particularly, there's an interesting opportunity here. Can we, the, the revisit, is it dovetailing that the revisit of the ERA and this, is, is it all coming together at some certain level for you? It, it, it is, yeah. it is, and I certainly hope it does for younger women. Yeah. I don't blame them, Gene, for not knowing a whole lot about this. They've always been able to play sports. That's right. That's right. They've always been able to take science in high school. That's right. They've always been able to get in medical school, law school. Those things were fought for piece by piece by piece, mm -hmm. and fought hard. Mm -hmm. And we have to have an ERA to make sure that we don't lose them, and that future rights that will come along, and there will with all the technology and so forth, mm -hmm. that we don't have to fight those battles again. That's right, that's right. I'm here with Martha Burke, and you mentioned uh, the title of your book, Your Voice, Your Vote. We're talking about the Equal Rights Amendment. It may sound like some musty thing from days of yore, but it's very relevant now, as you're hearing from Martha. We welcome your questions and thoughts about this. doesn't have to be a question, just a thought is, is good, too. Uh, I noticed uh, our colleague Diane Snyder, uh, Senator Snyder, she was weighing in on our Facebook page a couple of days ago, and uh -huh. like a lot of other women, there was a, that sense of that quote, I never thought I'd see this day come. Almost as if, you know, similarly to Barack Obama being the first African-American president, a lot of folks, it, it was hard to picture. That is part of the battle, isn't it? Be able to picture something and, and, and see it actually as a reality in your own mind. We, we have to give mm -hmm. our friend, colleague, crusader, Billie Jean King credit for that. Uh. Billie Jean King always says, you have to see it to be it. And she it. wanted female it. role models. Right. And one of the frequent sayings in the 1970s vis-a-vis -vis the Equal Rights Amendment mm -hmm. is in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And many of the crusaders that were here and fought so hard in the 70s have passed on 
but I certainly hope in our lifetime, right. That's right. Uh, maybe in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, we can see this as a reality. That's right. We should work in as well. The Justice Department has a very big role in this as well. We know uh, A.G. Barr. I don't know where he's at on this, but I can take a rough guess where he might oh, be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what do we do there? That's, that's, a, that's a serious roadblock that needs well, to be dealt with. Well, we have to look at how he got uh, confirmed. Okay. Uh, a lot of members of Congress bought into the notion that he was going to do his job appropriately. He right. hasn't. Right. So we got to ask those candidates again. Women have a lot of power here. Right. How did you vote on Barr? And why did you vote for Barr with all of the evidence there that he was going to turn himself into the president's personal attorney instead of the people's attorney. Right. And right. so, and, and I, you know, before we leave, I, mm -hmm. I want the uh, audience to know that uh, your voice, your vote is not about the history of suffrage or indeed the history of the vote. It's about the power you have of the vote now and the change right. we need. That's right. It's nonpartisan. I appreciated that as well. You don't really name names. And no. It, it's just really well, a guide. Well, I name names mm -hmm. if there's an office holder that has done something true, true. concrete. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't name candidates. I don't right. talk about that. Right. Who's book signing at the Guild? Oh. Do talk about that. You have a book signing coming up locally. Week, this is interesting. A week from Sunday, uh, it'll be at the Guild Theater. Okay. They're showing a documentary called Equal Means Equal, ah. uh, which has been around for a few years. I'm in it. Okay. Uh, but it's still making the rounds because it's still relevant. It's yeah. about the things we got and fought for and the things we still need. That's right. So the film is at one, they're having a panel, and then I will be doing a book signing in the lobby afterward. Where can folks buy the book, by the way? Well, right now, I, and I don't personally have a copy in my hand. <laughs> they're supposed to be arriving Monday. It just came out this week. Funny. Uh, but it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Powell's Independent Books. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, individual stores, I honestly have not had time to check, but right. and you can get it online at any of those three and possibly walk in the store and get it this early, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Okay. I know you're restricted, you personally as the author, from pitching bookstores. You can't actually I do can't, that. I can't <laughs> sell my books to the bookstore and let them resell it. Now, right. I can walk in and say, gee, I'd like you to order my book from the publisher. Sure. And what would really help is if people that care about these issues would walk in and say, do you have this book? Yes, absolutely. Because a lot of people want a real book in their hands. They don't want to order online. That's right. That's exactly, I might be one of those too. Yeah. Martha, thank you so much. This is an important topic. I want to catch up with you on this as it goes along. It is certainly not over. Virginia, we thank you very much, certainly. Uh, we'll see what happens in the courts as it goes along, too, for those other states that decided they wanted to go backwards on this. Mm -hmm. I just <laughs> still kind of flabbergasted by that, kind of interesting. But go ahead and push. If you've got thoughts now that you've heard from Martha in this whole idea of the Equal Rights Amendment, if you have a thought or concern or whatever, a huzzah as well, do include it in the thread below, and we'd be glad to hear from you. Until then, Martha, thank you very much. Thank you so much really for having it. me on this very important topic. Sure is. We would appreciate it. Thanks, guys.